excellent. The Overthinker, frozen. Retrofinger, on the run from ninjas. The Fairy, incapacitated. Robofinger, winning. All according to plan. But not according to our deal. Ah, Fib. To what do I owe the pleasure? Say it! Do you really intend to let that blasted android be victorious? And what if I did? Hmm? Listen here. I brought those two ninjas back from the pits and restored their powers because you said you wanted to fuck with the Overthinker. And I thought that sounded like fun. But if you intend to let the Robo-Thinker destroy humanity... Why should you care? Because the mortal world is mine! Mankind and his boundless capacity for sin belong to me, and I paid a heavy price for them. But the state the Robo-Thinker will leave them in, a ruined people without hope, living day to day, hand to mouth, <sighs> such people lose capacity for desire, for temptation. What use do I have for them then? Or they for you. Now you li- No, you listen to me. We both know that you have no sway over me, that my strength now equals and will soon eclipse your own. Slink back to your pits, demon. Relish what power you still possess. I and my pits I have more than power, beast. You should be careful who you trifle with. Damn it, frozen again. <sighs> Having been through this shit twice now, I can safely say it would actually be nicer if I wasn't aware of my surroundings and the passage of time, but at the very least, I don't have to worry about Cryofinger refreezing me when this starts to melt, since I'm watching him and his idiot brother race out the door after Retrothinker. I don't know what he's planning either. If I couldn't make a dent in the Robothinker, and even Omega Thinker is having a tough time of it, I don't know what he thinks he can do. And me, all I can do is sit here and thaw. Try not to die long enough to get free and figure out what the hell is going on here. All right, Overthinker, calm down. Focus on the now. You don't want to die here. You don't want the last thing you ate to be SpaghettiOs. You don't want the last thing you drank to be cheap domestic beer. You don't want the last game you played to be... What was I playing? Oh, Bad Dudes. Data East Collection. Huh. You know, that actually wouldn't have been so bad. I love these retro collection games. A whole bunch of classics right there for the asking, usually a couple of gems you'd never heard of stuck in with the ones you actually bought it for. I mean, it's not the ideal solution for preserving the history of the medium. I still maintain we need a sort of iTunes for classic games model for that, and for the publishers and license holders to release the damn stuff instead of sitting on it and not even making money off of it. And yes, I know you can pretty much get every damn game ever made using emulators and MAME and whatnot, but I'd still feel better about things like this being official, you know? So, since I know for some reason it's just too much to ask that the industry get together and figure out a single universal system for jointly preserving and making available the vast storehouses of classic games, collections based around a single publisher or theme or IP are probably still the way to go, especially since you can release them as download packages on XBLA, Steam, eShop, or whatever now. A nice start would be for all of those fantastic ones like Midway Arcade Treasures, Tato Legends, Namco Museum, etc. that were all the rage a few years ago to come back out for current and next-gen consoles. Except this time, enough with the damn multiple disc releases for a run of games you could easily fit all on one. Hell, increased storage space is one of the best arguments to do these things now. Games we're talking about mostly come from an era when 100 megs was this gigantic, nigh-impossible height. I mean, I'm no math genius, but I'm reasonably certain that Konami and Capcom could each fit their entire NES, SNES, and Genesis libraries onto one disc apiece. And that's a generous estimate. Didn't some guy get the entire NES library onto a 1-gig flash drive a while back? Of course, some of those games were licensed, so that might be an issue. 
which means that these themed collections are probably still going to be the best way for gamers to get their hands on classic compilations into the near future. With that in mind, and because I need something to think about while I wait for this damn ice to wear off, here's the Game Overthinker's mental list of the TOP 5 COLLECTIONS THAT NEED TO GET MADE! Number 1. The Capcom Walt Disney Collection. Back in the day, Capcom's deal with Disney was pretty much the ultimate exception to the rule of licensed games sucking ass. Almost all of the Capcom Disney games were solid, and the 16-bit ones featured some of the best sprite animation of the era. But there were also straight-up classics like the two DuckTales games, Rescue Rangers, Castle of Illusion series, Mickey's Magical Quest, the Genesis Aladdin, Darkwing Duck, and since all of these franchises are still owned by Disney, they'd really only need to have one rights issue cleared. And that's assuming Capcom's usage contract has fully expired by now. If it hasn't, they should just do this anyway. Yes, the Game Gear, Game Boy, and even PC versions too. To me, this would feel like a slam dunk. The Disney brands are pretty much evergreen. Maybe some of the 90s Disney Afternoon specific stuff might not be immediately known to young kids today, but Mickey and the Gang and especially the fairy tale movies are still prime money makers. And while it's true that the vast majority of these games were pretty basic side scrolling platformers, in case you haven't noticed, that genre has made a big comeback with the younger generation recently. Capcom, Disney, this is money you could be printing. Number 2 The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Collection. The Ninja Turtles are as inextricably linked to video games as they are to comics or cartoons, maybe even more so, a byproduct of their being the big youth property at the moment when tie-in games became big business and not just a merchandising afterthought. Either way, the fact is there's been a lot of Turtle games, to the point that playing through them all can provide an interesting perspective on the evolution of the medium as multiple generations of technology reinterpret the same material. Also, look, there were a lot of awesome Ninja Turtle games, so why not have them all on one disc? And I mean all. The iconic arcade games, certainly, but also the often different console ports and console exclusives. Yes, the kind of broken original NES one. Yes, the Game Boy and PC titles. In fact, that should be a rule for these kinds of re-releases. If you can, release all the versions, especially the ports, since back in the day you often got a radically different game that way. Number 3. WCW and WWE Wrestling Collections Okay, yes, I'm cheating here by putting two into one entry, but they're thematically appropriate and to list them separately would have just been repetitious because it'd be the same basic argument. Now granted, this is probably on here because yeah, I'm a fan of pro wrestling, but the 2D era of wrestling games was actually a really interesting genre from a design and gameplay perspective, even outside of just getting the chance to play as whoever your favorite wrestler was. Since these games were trying to replicate a sport... <laughs> Oh yeah, while I'm on this, pro wrestling is a sport. Yes, even though it's staged and scripted. If other forms of performance athletics like gymnastics or ice dancing qualify as sports, and they do, wrestling should count too. <clears throat> And since these games were trying to replicate a sport that technically had a system of rules meant they often had to, or at least attempted to, have a more nuanced, skill-based combat system than a lot of the other one-on-one -on -one fighting games of the same era. And it's pretty interesting to see how developers and designers work to translate things like three-dimensional ring movement, grappling, and holds into 2D graphics with largely pre-analog controls. There's also the issue of history in play here. These games, and there are a lot of them, especially when you get to the arcades and the 16-bit era, are an invaluable pop culture touchstone thanks to pro wrestling being one of those entertainment mediums that tended to to instantly reflect the cultural taste of the world around it, making these games fascinating time capsules of the eras in which they came to be. You can pop in, say, the Midway Arcade version of WrestleMania and go, yep, that was 1995, alright. Number 4. DC and Marvel Comics Collections yeah, I'm cheating again here, same reasons, and I don't think an explanation is really required. Video games and superheroes have always gone together pretty well, and they've been going together pretty well since the beginning of the medium. Wouldn't it be nice to have them all in one place, or two places rather? Now granted, there would be a lot of average to crummy games in there, but those can be just as interesting and instructive and certainly as worth preserving for the future posterity as the good ones. But there would also be some real classic fun stuff in there. The original Sega X-Men, the crazy underrated SNES Hulk, the arcade brawlers for Spider-Man, Avengers, Punisher, and Superman. Good times. Plus, you could have a version of the Sega X-Men that wouldn't break when you tried to do that reset trick. Number 5. The Tengen NES Collection. Okay, Nintendo, Atari, y'all need to bury the hatchet on this one. Collection or no collection. Okay, quick history lesson. Back in the day, Atari split into two companies, and the one that handled the home console side of the business released NES games under the label Tengen. They wanted to get around Nintendo's strict licensing guidelines, so they pulled a fast one on the U.S. Patent Office to get a look at the NES lockout chip that prevented non-approved cartridges from working on the system and released the now infamous Tengen Black Cart series of games before Nintendo sued them out of existence. Yeah, yeah, industry skullduggery, both sides acting kinda childish, whatever. Point is, it was decades ago, there were some good games in there, including the original and for a long time still the best console version of Tetris, and it's a significant moment in gaming history. A nice set collecting these games and where possible their original counterparts, since most of them were ports, would be a worthy addition to any gamer's catalog. And yeah, that's my list of classic collections gaming really, really needs. What I really, really need is to get out of this fucking ice, which I'm now realizing is melting a lot slower than before, given that it's January. <sighs> I hope the others are okay.
Especially Ivan, he took a direct hit from that android bastard. Ivan, what are you doing here? Ivan, stunned, must talk like Incredible Hulk. What happened? Robothinker blew me about 30 miles across town. Figured a police station would be fortified enough to break my fall. What about your boss? Don't know. Lost contact. No, never yet. Omega Thinker, I brought the stones. Ivan, no! Achievement unlocked, foolish human noob. Magic rocks are mad weak and cannot save you from ponage. Um, a magic rock powers you. Robothinker is powered by leak skills. <sighs> I will not let you destroy this world. I'm free! Who are you? And what happened to my shirt? But more importantly, who are you? What? Oh, yeah, oh, forgive me, instability. My name is Dr. Beato. I'm afraid that I'm responsible for that mechanical monstrosity what's been giving you so much trouble. Dr. Beardo. Yes, the Omega Thinker mentioned you. Omega who? There's no time to explain. Can you stop the Robo Thinker? Ah, yes, yes, I, I believe I can. This device, I've modified it, you see. It can neutralize the white crystal, rendering it completely incompatible with its circuitry and no longer useful as a power source. Of course, you will have to get the crystal out of him in the first place. Good enough for me. How did you know to come here? How did you even find me? Even UPS can't find this place most of the time. I came on Senator Laverson's advice. He thought you might be in the spot. Now, get going, lad. There's no time. Mm-hmm. <laughs>